Konnichiwa. My name's Joe Williams and I'm the artist of this exhibition that we're going to do an artist talk on. Me and Leonard and an old piano that is now based in Gattaca's art space which in these terrible times of coronavirus in, is in lockdown. Um, and uh, what was I going to say? Oh, also, I don't mind these little mistakes because that's me. This is uh, Gatticus Art Space 10th birthday. So happy birthday, Gatticus, in these really weird times. So to talk about uh, the idea, the inspiration, the passion behind this exhibition I'm going to talk about, me and Leonard and an old piano, is based on the music or the lyrics of Leonard Cohen and um, Piano Hammers. I will brag, I have, happen to have a couple in my pocket, right? Now. Isn't that amazing? So the whole exhibition is based on these little guys. Yeah, so the piano came in for um, seven years ago when Gimpy celebrated their 15th birthday and Julie Gibbs, the director of Gimpy Art Gallery, asked me if I'd do a series of workshops there. Because the theme was playing up, and they think playing up when you're 15, that's just par for the course. So the theme was playing up and the visual imagery on all the uh, advertisement was piano keys, black and white piano keys. So with that in my head, I was just trawling through the Maryborough dumps shop, as you do, and found a piano, this old piano. So I rung up Julie and said, oh, Julie, I've got this piano. It's only 80 bucks. Right, get it, get it, get it, and we'll have it for the uh, workshop, see? For those that don't know, uh, this is um, in Maryborough, and that was in Gympie, so it's an hour away. So the piano cost 80 bucks, but getting it to Gympie cost about 3000 So the logistics of that was just out of the question. So I ended up with this old piano that was sort of rotting in the front yard for a while. Julie got another piano. So those workshops over three weeks were just absolutely fascinating. I had everybody, had about 18 in the class and everybody drawing piano hammers like, you know, expanding them, minimising them, all set to different music. And I've always worked with music in my workshop. So because music makes you change, you know, it's, a, it's an emotional, powerful mood changer music is and years ago in the um, flying art school one of the tutors that came up to Gladstone where I was living just out of Gladstone at the time Mount Larkham Pat Hoffey um, marvelous tutor anyway she projected a scene of the Last Supper on the wall and it was huge like it's about you know 30 foot long or something there's this amazing scene of the Last Supper and it was so ethereal so so sacred with all this beautiful music behind it like um, the the Gregorian chants I really can't remember the music but it was so spiritual and you see these beings these earthly beings but suddenly the music changed and uh, Mario Lanza's drink 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 come on and suddenly all these characters that you know nanosecond before were these ethereal beings were just drunken this drunken mob absolutely shit-faced and it absolutely amazed me the power of music and what I was looking at Chain did not change, but what came to that changed what I was looking at, and that is the power of music. So I use it in my classes all the time. So I use a, a really like Philip Glass, uh, a didgeridoo, African drums, Bach, Mozart, the Montserrat Boys Choir, all these different musics, and people do when I when I'm uh, working in my own studio. I listen mostly to Leonard, but all different sorts of music depending how I want my mood for today. I've also, because I've written uh, my artist statement which is up on the wall here, I have written that the first time I heard Leonard Cohen, uh, probably not the first time I actually heard him, but the first time I really heard him. And the difference there was before I got sober. So in this particular time I was sober, it was in the tape days, there's no CD. I put a tape in the car, I'm driving down the highway and bird on a wire come on. And that line, like a drunk in a midnight choir. 
and and I just collapsed. I just wept because that that those words, that drunk in a midnight choir, only an alcoholic could know what that means. You know, if you're an alcoholic and you're always looking for some spiritual redemption, and I could see that alcoholic coming up this black back lane, searching out this midnight choir, trying to get some sort of solace in his soul. So that, that was the first impact that Leonard had on me and then that love affair with Leonard's lyrics continued as it still goes on to this day. So, so yeah, so before, when I was drinking, now it was all like, um, well like I said, I couldn't, when I got sober I couldn't keep, you know, walking after midnight with Patsy or heading down the highway with George Thorogood because I'd drink again, you know, because that's highly emotional like I was just saying about how music is so powerful, it plays with your emotions. So I had to find new music for, for the new state of being I was in, this whole new psychic change I'd experienced by getting sober. And that became like Medicine Woman and um, I forget the other one at the night, but it, it, was, it was beautiful meditative music that took, took the anxiety away from me so I could sleep. And, and I, couldn't, I, couldn't, I couldn't bear listening to commercial radio because it's all nah, 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 all crackling and ads and all that. My brain would just nearly explode in my head. So it had to be some sort of music that kept me at a certain, not, not, not a boring level, never, never boring, but a, at a pace that didn't jerk my emotions around. So yeah, music is really the foundation of this whole exhibition. Uh, the subject matter, like I said before, is the piano hammers. Now the piano hammers, like I said, the whole piano thing started in Gympie on their 15th birthday. Um, so then that progressed because I had not only had one piano, then someone gave me a piano. You know, hey, when you, it's re really weird when your mind goes into suddenly, oh, I wonder if there's any pianos. The universe goes, she needs a piano, and suddenly another piano comes around and people are sending you piano hammers and it's all about the piano. And you can't not do anything then. So, so I started um, doing things with these piano hammers. Now, the first sort of uh, thing that came up through that was a Facebook thing, and it was Inktober. So Inktober came along, so I thought, oh yeah, I'm going to do Inktober, that'll be fun. So I had a roll of paper and um, I just put a couple of piano hammers, like I showed you before, down. I had my ink and that was it. I thought, I'm going to do one piano hammer every day for the day of October. And that is this scroll over here, if we can just turn around. And it's really the first time I've seen it up because it's so long and that represents October. So that was, um, and sometimes like I, I had, there was a lot of things happened in October, you know, we got a rescue dog and I thought it was a little cute shih tzu and I got to the dog pound, it was a, a Irish wolfhound that was traumatized, came there with a bucket on its head and bouncing off walls and, um, and my friend broke, broke uh, their ankle, so I was looking after them. So even if I, ha I go down in the studio and just do one piano hammer, like might, might be five o'clock in the morning, then it might be 10.30 at night. It didn't matter what was happening in my day, I, I made, committed to do one piano, piano hammer a day. So that's that scroll. So the next thing that came up, was Sandra Ross from the Gimpy Art Gallery too. She, she wanted to have a closed Facebook page um, and the, the thing was pairs of pairs, like P-A-I-R-S of P-E-A-R-S, pairs. And I contemplated that for a while, thinking oh, that'd be so boring doing two pairs every day uh, for a year. And then I thought, oh, I could do the hammers. So I'll do two hammers every day. So, like I said before, when the universe hears this thing, because what I did to get ready for that year, the December before that year was going to go on with the um, pairs of pairs, I ordered special paper in and had my things there to use. And then, of course, the universe intervenes and says, go down the Howard Op shop 
and they're down the high of what I'll shop. It's all these music books, you know, like Robbie Williams, Chris Christopherson, Monty Python, stacks of music books. So I really believe when you're open to uh, an idea or an inspiration, the universe starts pouring in these things from all sorts of strange places. So that's when I started uh, drawing in the music books. And I don't know if we can now go over here to see the music books. Anyway, so here's one of the music books, Chris Christopherson. And I know you purists out there will be gasping that I've actually abused a music book, but that's what I've done. So here's sort of a, just a general day's drawing based on, like I said before, piano hammers. So every day I do drawing based on a pair of hammers. In, in a music book. So, and these, these are the, some of the drawings I have done. So they were actually in the music book. So I've taken them out of the music book and made an, another book out of them. Um, and you can see, I, I don't know if you can see, this is in front of a mirror. So it's, they're all, it's back and front of music. Now it's interesting, so this one, this particular drawing here, after, the, after I was doing the drawings, then, then I, I wanted to sort of blow them up, not with dynamite, but uh, expand them. Um, so this particular drawing here, and the, the um, song in the book was called Don't Tell Me I Can't Fly, which I love because you know, like being an Aries, you know, people say don't and you think, oh, don't tell me, don't. Anyway, so this particular one here is this painting here. Don't tell me I can't fly. And as you can see, uh, the drawings were all black and white. So it was very, very simple. A music book, one pen. That's all I do. But then the others, that's probably the last painting I did there. I don't know if you can see that. But some of them are black and white, like the drawings in the book. So all the big works here, except, except for uh, La Perouse song lines over there. And it's an interesting story about La Perouse song lines. We'll go over there. Now, um, you know, you hear the stories about how people or artists or anyone when they're young they see something that they go oh my god this is this is going to be my life well it was during i i started on this work before the other big works and i started it on an easel but i left it it was unfinished and so but then again then after that it was the last one i did now all the others are on board and I paint down. I get two saw horses and then put the work down on top. I don't paint on an easel because I love that. It's like how our First Nation peoples paint. They paint looking over. It's like a mapping, a journey. You become part of it. You don't, you don't know where the end destination is. You are over it and you are experiencing that whole journey as you paint it. You're so close to it. If it's on an easel, you're, I, this is my experience. You're separated from it. You're looking, you're coming back and you're looking at it and, and it's sort of like looking out of a window, I feel, or on a telly or something, but when you're over it. But like I said, with this one, it started on an easel. It, it was the last one I did, and it, I finished it looking over it. While I was painting it, looking over it, I had this amazing experience of this um, sort of like a, well, it was a 60 year, a combination of memories exploding in my brain as I'm doing this and it's why I called it La Peru song, song Lines. When I was about nine, I don't know, there's no records, but my father had left, my mother had left my alcoholic violent father in Mary Kathleen near Mount Isa in Queensland and escaped and went to Sydney with her three kids of which I'm the middle one. Now I was about nine, we ended up in a Salvation Army home in La Perouse. 
On a Sunday, it, you can imagine that was a very traumatic time. I only have about six visuals of that whole year spent in Sydney. One of the most amazing ones was on a, on a Sunday, we were allowed to go over the hill to go to this Oceanside Beach. But on the way, there was a path and it was all um, side by side. The Aboriginals were on the side selling all the artware. And I know I had an experience there. I had a con some sort of soul connection that I really don't have words for that um, has been with me forever. And I sort of re relate it to like Brett Whiteley finding that book of Van Gogh on the church pew when he was in boarding school and knowing, looking at that, that, that there was some connection there for his creativity. And the same with this La Perouse. And that's why I call this La Perouse song lines because of the experience I had when I was um, painting it. With the uh, drawings I did in uh, the music books, as you can see, I made my own book, you know, the previous uh, th um, vision over there of the, uh, I made a book out of them. But also what I've done is I got the drawings and I got prints made at the fabulous Wolfpack print in Harvey Bay, Craig and Naomi, if you need to go there. What is fabulous about that is it's not an online, you know, people are online ordering stuff from um, all their different uh, things to get cheap cards and that made, but there's no human contact. With Craig and Naomi at um, Wolfpack Print, you can go in there and say, look, I say, I'll go in there and I'm like, I want these drawings, can you put these drawings in a Constantina? print for me and they go oh we've never done that but we'll try so I can't can't do that online you can't have that sort of contact so these are the prints now from from the um, drawings so I've still got the original drawings and these are prints so it's like the gift that keeps on giving isn't it this is a little um, I do also do uh, assemblage and this is called Bird on a Wire. I don't have to explain that, do I? You can see the bird. And that's a piano hammer wire um, for that song that I was telling you about that first had that major impact on me. Um, and there's, uh, this is uh, another um, assemblage called The Holy Notes. I just love the words of Leonard Cohen and, and all those things. Um, can we... Um, go up here. The, um, the drawings in the book, like I said, became books and then became prints and then they became little paintings. So these little paintings up here are based on the drawings in the book. And sometimes when, you, when I was drawing in the book, like it would be the, the music that, I, the, the page of the music I was looking at that would sort of inform what I drew, like um, the um, uh, Busted Flat in Baton Rouge, you know, with me and Bobby McGee. You know, I had a r big red scarf around the hammer. And, and this one here, it's called Let Me Be a Witness. Now, that was, that's like a, a visual diary sort of thing. They, the hammers became little characters, you know, like little Daleks and something. So that's Anne Brown and I when we went to Goma to see... Ah, oh, gee, I never, y Yamamoto, y is that her, how you pronounce her name? That fabulous exhibition of that beautiful Japanese artist. So that's Anne Brown and I standing in front of her artwork. So it, it becomes quite um, really, really personal um, because it's uh, based on the day. Um, another one over there uh, that we've passed before, it's these two little hammers and they're sort of on their backs with all these wavy, wavy lines and, and I took the, most of them are named after Leonard Cohen's lyrics and this one's called Everybody's Wounded and it's from that line in that Leonard song saying, you know, it's Father's Day and everybody's wounded. It's so powerful. But I was in up at Boyne Island, um, my, a really um, close friend of mine had lost a son to a drug overdose. And on the day, I was up there for a week with her, and on the day we'd been in to identify his body, um, we'd come back where she lived and we had to get in the water. It's sort of like you do have to have that sort of that baptism, that cleansing of water. And because she'd had a stroke a few years before and she couldn't be left unattended, we're both in the water 
with all this feeling from what uh, you know was transpiring with it and that's why I've called that everybody's wounded in their own way you know so some are really really deeply personal some are really deeply sort of I, I, I just love this one um, to me it's it's really dense it's called strike a chord bit of Madonna thrown in there strike a chord but like I said before, some are the black and white, so they're just really uh, true to the drawing that I did in the music books, only they're blown up. What I've done since then with these, the big uh, images, I just zero in on a detail and then I paint the detail. So it, I don't know when this will end and you know I don't, I don't care everything's on the day because you know like I love that saying um, people make plans and God laughs I've, I've always felt and done a quiet chuckle when people say make your five-year plan you're going to do this and this well you know as we can see today in this coronavirus <laughs> landscape plans are shot to hell so everything is on the day like it is anyway if you think any other way it's it's you know it's really um it's not true we've only got the day every single one of us has got one day but all the different themes i i love and i usually i start with a theme an idea and inspiration they continue to have impact on my art practice so this will continue to have i will continue work based on me and leonard and noel piano same as i still uh, do works based on my safe house series based on my um what was the other series um oh geez i can't even remember now <laughs> which one was it anyway the other one oh my earth coats i love my earth coats so i've just made another coat so i you know that's how i work it's an organic um, I was just saying to someone this morning, you know, what is the difference between organic and undisciplined? You know, is that a really fine line? I don't know, but I like organic. I'll stick with organic because that's really, uh, it's a nice word, better than undisciplined. So, um, also did this uh, altar to song here. This is um, just a, there's a fabulous art thing they have, and I think it's everywhere, but Gatticus runs it, uh, Waste to Art, so everybody's got to go get stuff from the dump shop or the op shop or whatever, what, which most artists do anyway. I've been doing that for years and years, but this is one of those um, things that I just transformed a, a cupboard into this is altar to song. Um, and, and it contains a lot of, not just CDs, but the tapes, I know I'm uh, so old, I know there's no, you know, like little... <laughs> oh, I still love my tapes, I wish I had a tape machine, I used to have one. Um, so yeah, they've got the pianola rolls and the music I love, the soul music and all that. And, and a bunch of piano hammers there. And, it's, um, and here's some, I, I, I have actually done quite a lot of these little, these little ones and it's just a... And they're the sort of... Um, the little holy notes basically yeah so um, I don't know if there's any questions that I can't hear that you'd like to know um, but uh, I hope you listen to my talk and I hope you sort of uh, get into different things I'm doing little things on my Joe's Art Cave thing you can find me on Joe Williams on Facebook or Joe's Art Cave and of course this exhibition will be hanging up for the till the end of May anyway till hopefully the earth has healed and um, we all get back to well not normal will we we'll be back to hopefully a, a better different paradigm and I'll, I'll close with this beautiful words from Leonard Cohen ring the bells you still can ring forget your perfect offering thank you